Before starting this video, I would like to give a shout out to my friends at Glaze. The tempered glass that you see for the OnePlus 60 as well as the iPhone XR in this video is from them and they've recently launched their new premium curved edge to edge tempered glass for these devices. So if you guys have the OnePlus 60 or the new iPhones then do check them out and you can use the promo code Gizmo to save 10% off your order. The curved edge tempered glasses are really nice and premium. I have been using it on my devices and I really like them. So yeah, the link is in the video's description. Hey guys, Gizmodict here and today we are reviewing the OnePlus 60. So OnePlus is back with their half yearly refresh and this time around the OnePlus 60 while very similar to the OnePlus 6 is a bit different. And yeah, you might be wondering why am I holding the OnePlus 6 when I'm reviewing the 60. Well, the thing is I actually had borrowed the OnePlus 60 for a month so I had to give it back. And since the OnePlus 6 and the 60 almost look the same on the back apart from this fingerprint sensor, Let's just assume that this is the OnePlus 60. Anyways, let's just get started with the review and I'll let you know my thoughts about the 60. Honestly, I feel that the OnePlus 60 is still one of the most uh, no-nonsense value for money phone that you can buy at least in India. I know that the pricing of OnePlus devices is going up every year with every new iteration that they make. But then still, this is one of the most value for money devices not only in terms of specifications and hardware but also in terms of software and user experience. I mean, you guys know that it's very easy to throw in a Snapdragon 845 these days. Xiaomi is doing it with the Poco F1 for half the price. Asus is doing it with the Zenfone 5Z. So putting up high specifications in a phone is very easy. But what matters is the end user experience, the software experience. And that is where the OnePlus kills the competition. It still offers the complete package and right from the build quality of this phone, it is worth the money that you're paying for. You've got a glass body on the back similar to what we had on the OnePlus 6 and it feels absolutely rich and premium. It can get scratched very easily and it also attracts a lot of fingerprints but then you can slap on a case like I have the sandstone case and things are just as good. I mean it's one of the most premium feeling phones especially the display on the front. You've got an AMOLED display, it's a 6.3 inch display and it is absolutely one of the best quality panels I've seen at this price point. Like I said it's an AMOLED display so you've got very saturated colors, deep blacks, the viewing angles are good and overall I love the display on the OnePlus 60. And who can forget the dewdrop notch, I mean uh, it just makes the experience even better and I really like the concept of a dewdrop notch as compared to the bigger notch that we have on the OnePlus 6. So yeah, the display is one of the best in this price segment, the colors, the viewing angles, everything's great, you're gonna love the display. And I've compared it to other phones as well like the Poco F1 as well as the Zenfone 5Z and even the iPhone XR and I prefer the display on the OnePlus 60. So yeah, it greatly improves the experience of using the phone and talking about experience, like I said, here's where OnePlus wins. So let's talk about it. The Snapdragon 845 and the 8 gigs of RAM handle everything effortlessly on the OnePlus 60 but OnePlus needs to be credited for their software. Oxygen OS without any doubt has been my most favorite interface. It is super fast and smooth like vanilla Android but it's got these value added features like call recording, dual apps, the profile switch on the side, the gestures, the gaming mode, app locker and quick launch. Quick launch has been one of my favorite features because it's very cool. You can hold on to your fingerprint sensor while unlocking the phone and it will show you a bunch of apps that you can directly choose to open. All of these things make the end user experience far more superior than other devices in this price bracket. Plus OnePlus has really improved in terms of updates. On my OnePlus 6, I got the Pi update very quickly and on the 60, they keep sending security updates every month. Plus OnePlus promises to give two major Android updates and up to three years of security updates I think so all in all the software experience and support is superb and that's definitely worth the money that you're paying for this phone. In fact I think that is the reason that OnePlus devices are the go-to phones for a lot of iPhone users. So I've had a lot of friends who've used an iPhone earlier but then now they're switching to Android with the OnePlus 6 and the 60. So yeah that speaks volumes about the optimization and the trust that people have at least in India for the OnePlus brand. Even my primary device is the OnePlus plus six especially because of PUBG. The 60 plays it exceedingly well. I've played it on the Poco F1 as well as the Zenfone 5Z but my experience on the OnePlus 6 
and the 60 has been the best. The display is amazing to play on, the audio via the headphones is loud and clear and the gameplay is buttery smooth. But that's where the OnePlus 60 is at bit of an advantage. There is no headphone jack on this phone. Although OnePlus says that they removed the headphone jack to free up some extra space, I don't buy that explanation. I mean if you think about it a couple of months ago, OnePlus was the one that trolled Apple a lot about the missing headphone jack on their devices and now they are following the same path. I seriously hate the fact that there is no headphone jack on the OnePlus 60 and that is exactly the reason that I've stuck to the OnePlus 6 as my daily driver. Because you cannot use your earphones while charging the phone. Now I know that it's not recommended to use your earphones when the phone is charging. But if you game a lot on your phone, especially PUBG, you have to admit that at least once you've played while charging your phone and with earphones on. So yeah, that is something you cannot do on the OnePlus 60 and that might be a deciding factor for a lot of people. So yeah, I hate the fact that there is no headphone jack on this phone, but can we do anything about it? We can't. But at least OnePlus has the decency to give you the Type-C to headphone jack adapter inside the box because Apple doesn't even do that anymore. And talking about the Type-C earphones that you could get for free initially with the OnePlus 60, I like the quality of them. They're good considering you could have gotten them for free with the phone and they work very well with the OnePlus 60 as well as some other devices as well like the Poco F1 as well as the Moto One Power. Anyways, let's jump into the camera and things are identical here with the OnePlus 6. The OnePlus 60 like the OnePlus 6 definitely has an amazing camera at this price point. Anyone who's gonna buy the 60 will totally not complain about it because the stock app itself can take amazing photos. The selfies are very good, the portrait mode is good, plus in extreme low lighting conditions, you can use the night sight on Google camera, which produces some very wonderful results. I've actually made a video about it, so I will link it in the description box, you should go check it out. So I'm very happy with the performance of the camera here, plus even in terms of video, you've got optical image stabilization, there is 4K up to 60fps, so the phone is pretty much sorted when it comes to camera and video recording. Where we do see a small upgrade though is in terms of battery life. So you've got 3750mAh of battery on the OnePlus 60 and it's good enough for a day. The battery is not as good as the budget phones that you have but then I could get around 5 to 5.5 hours of screen on time on this phone on very heavy usage. And my usage is actually very heavy. I play PUBG on this phone, my phone is on 75% brightness or more, I stream audio via Bluetooth a lot. My phone is on 4G, I use Google Maps a lot, so yeah, it's a very heavy and taxing scenario and the OnePlus 60 does well. It works for a day and I'm happy with it because you've got dash charger on this phone. And ever since I've gotten used to dash charge on OnePlus devices, everything else feels so slow. I mean, even putting this phone for like 20 to 30 minutes gives you so much battery that you should be fine. Plus now you also have warp charging on the McLaren edition of the OnePlus 60. But yeah, overall the battery life as well as the charging scenario is great on the OnePlus 60. I love the dash charge feature and I wish more and more manufacturers get faster charging on their devices. Lastly, I want to talk about the fingerprint sensor on the OnePlus 60. You've got the in-display sensor which honestly, I expected to be slow based on my experience with the Vivo X. But then on the OnePlus 60, it is definitely faster than the Nex, although it still can't beat the hardware sensor on the OnePlus 6. It won't recognize your finger sometimes, you need to be very accurate with how you press on the sensor. But I think it's a welcoming change, because OnePlus's face unlock in itself is super fast. So you won't have to use the sensor a lot in the first place. Call quality and network reception has also been great on this phone. You've got dual SIM card support, so that's very good. But I wish this phone had a micro SD card support, but sadly we don't have that. One thing that the OnePlus 60 misses out on is the LED notification light. The OnePlus 6 has it, but then because of the dewdrop notch, they had to chuck that in the OnePlus 6. So I didn't like that because I like having the LED notification light on my phones, but then the OnePlus 60 gets the ambient display and considering this is an AMOLED screen, it should be good. But overall to sum this up, I think OnePlus has a winner here once again with the OnePlus 60. It's a terrific value for money device for 40,000 rupees in India, but then OnePlus needs to really be careful with the pricing of their future variants. I mean the LG G7 ThinQ is cheaper than the OnePlus 60 right now in India and that phone has a more versatile camera setup, you've got a wide angle lens there. You've also got 2K display and a lot of other things on the LG G7. LG doesn't market that phone well plus the software is kind of a hit or miss on the G7 and because of that people are not noticing that phone that much. So yeah, OnePlus needs to be very careful with the pricing plus if you're in the US actually, you can buy the Samsung Galaxy S9 for the same price as the OnePlus 60. And as you all know, the S9 is a much more superior device than the OnePlus 60. So OnePlus needs to be very careful because I don't think they can jack up the prices more for their OnePlus devices unless they're giving you a better flagship grade camera and a 2K display. And please don't waste your money on the McLaren edition of the OnePlus 60. While it sounds very cool for 51,000 which is like 
11 grand more than the OnePlus 60 it doesn't make a lot of sense unless and until you are a big McLaren fan then maybe you can buy that phone but i personally would go with the regular variant of the OnePlus 60 also one thing i'd like to mention is that OnePlus is no longer a flagship killer in fact it's become a flagship that other brands like Poco and Asus are trying to kill but yeah i still like the OnePlus 60 and if you're in india then you should definitely consider buying this phone for 40000 rupees anyways that wraps up my video about the OnePlus 60 if you guys have any more questions or if you guys have your own thoughts about the OnePlus 60 then please let me know in the comments if you guys enjoyed watching this video then please hit the like button and if you're new here then definitely hit the red subscribe button and press the bell icon so that you don't miss out more reviews like these in the future anyways that's all for now thanks for watching and i'll be back in your notifications very very soon peace Thank you.